This is Musically Meditative Podcast with Joe Riley. This is a happy birthday announcement. I mentioned it uh, in a podcast prior. Deftones Around the Fur. It's 20 years old, and it blows my mind. It came out October 28th of 1997. This was their sophomore album. You could call Deftones alternative heavy metal if you haven't ever heard of them before. This is a good place to start. This album really changed my life, and people kind of say that about a lot of things and maybe not really mean it, but this one really did. And it came at a time where... I was very young and impressionable with a lot of things, but Deftones are that band that I loved in high school that I still listen to and I'm not embarrassed to listen to them. And with this album is where they started to mix some different elements in there for me to say that right now. Is this the album where they kind of No, that was White Pony. Mainstream? No? That, that was White Pony. That was okay. their third album. Okay. This is their sophomore album, Around the Fur. This album has the iconic girl sitting on the edge of a swimming pool but it's from the it's a weird album cover but it's from like the bird's eye angle and chino the lead singer of the deftones never cared for it but what's really tripping me out about the album cover too there's stuff online where she was a groupie model that was hanging out with them while they were recording this and they had this uh photographer at the time that was like really good for skateboarders that was just taking random pictures like when they were recording and partying and uh they had something online with her holding the album cover. Like here I am, you know, 20 years later and it just blew my mind. Like if you've ever been to my house, like I found this album cover, like a poster of it. And I randomly found it on eBay years ago and it was from Germany and I had it framed and it was like in my living room or it was always somewhere in my house. So if you know me well and you've been to my house, like this album cover was in the living room at one time. So and if anyone, I mean, this is this is a classic. So if you've been into anything somewhat heavy or whenever you started listening to more heavier alternative music, like this is this is a classic album. And it just, like I said, it 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 changed my life. Um, at the time too, there were a lot of bands like Corn was huge, Limp Bizkit was huge. You had the whole rap rock I was thing going, going my on. Phase. Yeah, this is when I was going through my Corn phase. But then I heard this, and I was like, they like. I liked Corn. I loved them, but I was like, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Who is this? Because, you know, Deftones' first album, Adrenaline, it had that raw punk rock kind of vibe, and then it had the rap rock thing in there, which was popular at the time, and it's a classic. But like I said, this one changed a lot of things for me personally because they started putting elements of some shoegaze in there and some new wave. Shoegaze through some of the guitar tones, but New Wave through Chino's approach to the vocals. And that's what caught my attention 20 years ago. I think I first started listening to this in 1998. And everything was heavy and it was awesome. But I'm like, who is that? Who is that singing? Like, that's a different approach. Like, I was used to, like, shouting and screaming and Chino does that on this. But he threw in his New Wave influences, you know, his Duran Duran, his Depeche Mode, The Cure the Smiths, you know, Morrissey, like this album really is what got me into all that new wave as I got older. I mean, I remember that when I was younger, but Chino singing and his approach to vocals on this really, really had a huge impact on me. Huge impact. It was recorded in Seattle by Terry Date. He's a phenomenal old heavy metal producer that worked with them all the way up to their fourth studio release. Um, this was another album too that featured Frank Delgado, their sample keyboard player, on certain tracks, and he wasn't an actual fifth member until 1999. But what was cool about that, there was a trend going on with DJs and shit and groups, but Frank never did, like, the scratching and whatever. He just put elements, like atmospheric ambient elements, into songs with the keys or the turntable or the samples to fill the void, and it was really cool, and he's a really good extra member to the band and you could hear him on this a little bit but it was before like i said he was an actual member and uh i think this album has a really good soft and loud dynamics that go together that make deftones who they are and they really were experimenting with that on this and it just really went together well like maybe more so than any other album by them mm -hmm. you know like like you asked is this their their commercial success no that's white pony white pony is a great album i mean it's probably my favorite but this is the one that changed me and then it had a bigger influence yeah it did like when i first like i said it was like corn and limb biscuit and all those different bands i love slayer and metallica and stuff but i'll never forget 
Uh, my good friend Dave Schaefer, rest in power. He, you know, he passed away unfortunately uh, about twelve years ago. Him and I were in a band too, and uh, he was the first one to actually bring this CD over. And when he brought it over, that's when it caught my attention. And we were sitting in my friend Mike Paris's bedroom, rest in power. He passed away too, unfortunately, my best friend. But I'll never forget his father, Mike's dad, Vic, is a drummer. He was really hip on music. You know, he had his drum kit and stuff in the back. We were jamming out this album, and it was the last song, MX. And Vic came to the back room. He goes, who is that band? Who is that? What are you guys listening to? And I was like, oh, it's Deftones. I remember Dave was there, and then... Dave was talking. He's like, yeah, this is Deftones. He's like, when did this come out? He's like, six months, a year ago. He's like, that's the best music you've guys listened to in like the last month. And that had an impact on me too because I was like, Vic's awesome. You know, like he's a good drummer. Like I remember the first time I met him, he was playing to Tool Sober. You know, I'm like, who is this guy? Like (laughs) great drummer, great guy, you know, shout out to Vic. But yeah, it's just crazy. Like that's how old this album is. Like two buddies that were close friends, unfortunately, aren't here anymore, you know. But I mean, like this, this was like a big impressionable change in my life, you know, like songs that make you laugh, songs that make you cry and mm-hmm. songs that change your life forever. Like that is this album to me. And uh I want to get into the first track, it's My Own Summer. Has probably the most to me the most classic introduction riff, guitar riff ever, you know. It just has a really good alternative heavy metal vibe. Everybody knows this probably. Uh it's just a classic like I said the dynamics is soft and loud. That's Deftones here. They always play it live. It always delivers. It, it's weird. I've heard the song probably 2,000 times, and it still really doesn't get old. I'll still leave it on. Second song's Labia. Uh, I actually got to see them play this maybe the second time ever. Like I said, I've seen these guys play 20 times. This past summer, they played it live. Um, has another aggressive, cool guitar intro. Awesome rhythm, dr- like drums. Bass has an overdrive sound. Chino kind of does like a skit scat rappy kind of delivery flow, but then the chorus is awesome. Sigh your boredom, I'll try anything. Cool lyrics. Third track is Mascara. I love this song. It's probably one of my most favorite Deftone songs. I haven't seen him play it live in a long time. It's very simple. It's very personal. Uh, this is where that new wave influence is coming again, like from Chino. But this song is about being in love with a woman and all of her imperfections, how it drives you nuts but you still love her. And at the end, it has like an ironic part. Um, Hey, I hate your tattoos. I hate your weak wrists, but I love your long shady eyes. That's why I'm married to you. And it's simple. It's vulnerable. It's sexy. It's beautiful. It's just a really, really cool Deftone song. Unfortunately, he divorced her or that she divorced him, but you know, (laughs) shit happens. That's how that goes. Um, Around the fur, the title track, you know, this, the album cover that, album title everything about this album has this weird vulnerable sex drugs and rock and roll vibe and this song is that um it just has a swagger a sexy swagger to it you know he he he's singing about getting women's attention should he ignore the fashion or should he go with the fashion or should he ignore the that's not making any sense should I ignore the fashion or should I go by the book? Like how to get a woman's attention, how to keep her involved and then doing all that. And then maybe not wanting to be with her anymore. I mean, you can interpret his lyrics a lot of ways, but that's what I like about this album. You know, it has a lot of, I'm in love with one woman, but I'm also maybe a little bit promiscuous because of my life and my rock style choices, you know, of partying and whatnot and being younger. Um, the fifth track, Rick Ricketts, um, this is a really heavy track. I love it. It has that push and pull dynamic of lyrically um, and with the music too. There's a lot of push and pull here. It's heavy, very, very heavy, but it's Chino complaining about trying to get his girlfriend or his wife's attention and her not showing any attention back and him just being frustrated with trying to get a woman's attention, you know, and then her giving her input and him just agreeing with it, but a good push and pull dynamic and then Be Quiet and Drive is probably one of the best Deftone songs. That's track six. Um, this is where the little shoegaze is coming in. When I say shoegaze, it's a type of of alternative music that came out in like the 90s. And it, it has like a very flangy, chorusy sounding guitar intro, the song does. And it's about um, 
just get in your car and driving far away with your best buddy. You know, you don't want to be in your same hometown and you just get out. You want to go. And it kind of has that cool, like, I'm out of here vibe. You know, I love it. It's a great song. They always play it live. Lotion is the seventh track. Uh, this is a straight up banger. This song has a really cool, catchy chorus. And that's, and go back to uh, Be Quiet and Drive. Actually, every one of these damn songs has a really catchy, hooky chorus. More than any of their other albums. I mean, I just, that just popped in my head right now. Like every one of these songs has a really, really cool, catchy Chino singing chorus. Like good hooks, good hooks. But Lotion, I love the hook. This song's about him kind of getting involved in the rap rock scene and not caring for it and trying to get away from it. And he's kind of, like I said, it has like a swagger or cockiness to it too. Like, kind of talking shit like i don't want to be involved in this scene anymore and then he kind of gets away with it with his chorus it's classical anyway like he's doing his own thing so i love it the eighth song die of the flu this is like a straight up love song awesome chorus again really cool intro with the bass overdrive uh by chi chang he unfortunately passed away in 2008 their original bass player in a car accident and she always brought that good energy live especially and i think that's a good the song makes me think of Chi like I know him because I love this band so much, you know. But, yeah, it's it's like a classic Deftones love song. Like I said, this album has a lot of relationship issues going on. Like, it's very emotional, very emotional. But, yeah, I love Die of the Flu. That's one song I've never get, got to see them play live, ever. Do they play live? Who, the Deftones? <clears throat> yeah, do they play it live? Oh, yeah. I've not, you just haven't seen them. No, I gave, I've gone on YouTube and maybe they played it when this album came out 20 yeah. years ago, but... I've never personally seen him play that song. And I love that song. It's one of my favorite Deftone songs. Head Up, that's uh, track nine. This is the to- like this album is a 10 out of 10, but this is the little rap rock action here. And then it was a good rap, rap rock anthem when I was younger, but I can't stand it now. I can't listen to it. Uh, my I was in a band called Indica when I was in high school with my buddy Dave that showed me this album. This is the song that we covered, you know? So it's just played out. <laughs> it's just played out but really it's it's cool because max cavalera is in it as a guest vocalist and guitar player he's the guitarist lead guitarist and vocalist from sepulatura and soulfly and uh the word soulfly is in the chorus of the song and the song is written and dedicated to max's stepson dana wells who was actually murdered and chino and all the deftones were friends with him and it was Max's, like I said, his stepson. So this song is like a angry song against the killers, and then they give him your soul will fly away kind of thing. And that's how Max actually came up with his band's name after he left Sepultura. He was in Sepultura, then he came up with Soul Fly. That's in the chorus of the song. I can't stand to listen to it anymore. They play it live too now for some reason, and it's annoying. Like they opened up with it the last couple of times, but it's just, that's the only song on this album I can't really listen to anymore. I just don't like the rap rock thing at yeah, all. Yeah. You know, it just dates it. It really dates it. It dates things. It dates things, you know, but it is what it is. The last song is MX. Um, this is a super sexy song. Like I said, it's uh, it's very romantic. It, it, it starts off with like a, a hardcore beginning and then it has Chino going back and forth. It's actually Abe's wife at the time about, hey, like, um, you know, what should I wear? Am I impressing her back and forth? And this girl's giving his, her feedback. It's a great song. It's kind of a closer. This is the one that Vic came in and asked, hey, what are, what are you listening to? You know, like, it's just got a really cool, like, back and forth vibe. Like, Chino's being vulnerable, but he doesn't know if he's impressing the chick that he wants to impress, lyrically. And then musically... It's just, it's a banger track, like, sounds great. And what's cool, too, is the last song, it's a secret song. Remember secret songs? Remember secret songs? Yeah. It's like 33 minutes in, and it's called Damone. I never got to see him play this song either, but it's one of my most favorite Deftones tracks ever. And this is where that shoegazy element's coming in, and she's doing the back, like, she, the bass player, would always do backup vocals, but the shoegaze element is coming in, and it kind of sets you up for a lot of the shoegazy stuff that comes into White Pony, their big commercial success, which is their best album, track to track. Like, There's one rap Rocky song on that too, but White Pony, is a, it's a classic. It's timeless. Like This is timeless too, but the rappy parts really, you know, 
head up really dates it but this album did change my life like mm -hmm. it it introduced me to all different kinds of music it made me realize that all this other stuff like corn and limp biscuit and so on and so forth is garbage like these guys are going to do something so when white pony came out this came out in late 97 white pony came out in the summer of 2000 they really took a different direction you know like if it wasn't for around the fur there wouldn't be bands like lincoln park you know i'm not a big fan but there wouldn't be a lot of emotional heavy alternative acts because they were the first ones to really blend that on a commercial level you know like everything didn't have to be aggressive and he didn't have to scream like this had elements of melody like i said there was a hook like every chorus was a hook up until head up so the first eight tracks you know my own summer the the opener like there really isn't like a a classic hook but man chino's vocals either you love it or you hate him i love him but like it's just he he went his own direction and another tidbit of this album i should have brought up in the beginning it only took him like two to four months to record you know it was one of those like everything fell into place for them chino didn't write any guitar parts he did a lot on white pony he wrote about half the songs but this was him expanding and being more vulnerable than usual and wearing his influences on his sleeve but letting steph carpenter the guitarist and abe and she like write their own versions of stuff yeah like their their own type of music but it's just a really really awesome album everybody should check it out i have i have like an original t-shirt from this like from 1997 like i still have it you still know in good shape yeah it's a little beat up but everything vintage is in style now isn't it yeah yeah okay good but yeah check out around the fur can't believe it's 20 years old I'm dating myself here too, but man, did it really change my life. I love it. If you've never listened to it before, please go do that. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, it was a great time. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Yeah.